we want to invite Chief Martin Onovo. Chief Martin Onovo, you are very much welcome to the program, sir. Thank you very much. So we are happy to have you tonight to speak on this very, very important topic, the situation in the country now with regards to the end SARS protests. So without wasting further much time, sir, what do you think is the root causes, the root cause of this end SARS protests ravaging Nigeria? Well, I think that uh, we are all agreed on all sides that the root cause is bad governance. I uh, also think that the government has also agreed indirectly. And uh, the evidence of bad governance uh, is uh, clear to an unquestionable degree. Uh, the results we have seen are very catastrophic. Right now, we're the third most terrorized country in the world. We're the third most terrorized country in the world. And that's not my opinion. That's according to the Global uh, Terrorism Index. That's one. Two, we are now the world's uh, capital of extreme poverty. We have the highest number of people who are extremely poor in the whole world. SARS was just a reflection of the lawlessness. Where civil servants, court officials, police officials who act with corruption and impunity. We were here when the Chief Justice of Nigeria was harassed in the most unlawful manner that led to his forced resignation. So the alliance of lawlessness is all over the place. Government has completely disregarded and turn the country to a stone age dictatorship. And that is what was reflected in the behavior of police uh, and uh, military officials, particularly SARS, particularly SARS. Because what SARS was doing is also done in many criminal investigation departments of uh, the police. The different dimension in SAR was the extrajudicial killing. Otherwise, police in Nigeria will routinely detain people and not charge them to court. But SAS acted particularly with impunity. And the young people, we are even more particularly affected. It's also an indication of the ambience of lawlessness. Where SARS left its primary function, which is anti-robbery, turned itself to investigate in quote economic crimes. That is not the role of SARS. That is the role of ERCC. But because this is the most corrupt government we have seen, corruption with impunity has overwhelmed public institutions. Unfortunately for us now, a simple peaceful protest could not be managed by this incompetent government. And it has led to this crisis which I've seen now. And as I talk to you today, there are cases of looting, all provoked by the brutal actions of the government against peaceful 
protesters. So with this situation, we are not surprised. It was predicted by so many ordinary people. We knew it will come to this. Because the government has a track record. The government has been in office for over five years. I am sure you will remember the case of Shite protesters. Unarmed white protesters. The allegation is that almost a thousand were killed. Unarmed Shite protesters by the same Nigerian army. In the same way, you remember the case of IPOP. Amnesty International reported over 150 were killed by this same Nigerian army. So we're not surprised. It is in the character of the under Abur attack to attack innocent civilians. And the case of NSAS protesters is just because these were young people who, when the army ordered them to disperse, did not disperse because they believed it was their own national army. They knelt down with their flags, started singing the national anthem. Now, what kind of a stone age criminal force shoots at such people. They knelt down with Nigerian flags and were singing the national anthem. And our own national army uses life ammunition on innocent young protesters. I mean, lives no more, no more exist in Nigeria. You know, for a long time we have been saying anything goes. And yet, anything goes in Nigeria, but it has continuously got worse. And we have this situation now where it is close to irreversible, very close. Right, we thank you very much for this uh, elucidation at this point. What people are asking, last night there is this controversy over whether some lives were lost when the military stormed the Lake Toll Gate. The Lagos State Governor said no lives were lost at that particular incident. But a few minutes ago, I received a press statement from Amnesty International saying that at least 11 lives were lost. How do you feel about this controversy, whether lives were lost or whether no lives are lost at all? What, what's, what's your thought about it? There, there is no controversy. There, there is no controversy. What, what you're calling a controversy is what I would call a denier. What you're calling a controversy is what I will call a denier. Amnesty, according to you, has a report that five lives were lost. According to this day newspaper, one life was lost. Eyewitnesses say several lives were lost and that there was a cover-up that the Nigerian army took away the corpses of the dead. And now there are other reports of previous incidents saying that the Nigerian army it performs this kind of illegitimate and lawless operation, tries to destroy the evidence. So uh, we don't see any controversy. We see a denial. And in the course of time, the full evidence will be pre presented. So there is no controversy. Right. Uh, we thank you for our guests and listeners. Our guest tonight is Chief Martin Onovo, the presidential candidate of the National Conscience Party in the 2015 
presidential election. I hope it's 2015, sir. Yes, it's 2015 presidential election. 2015, yes. Yes, 2015, yeah. Uh, yes, the National 2015, yes. Yeah, the National Conscience Party. We know that the National Conscience Party is the political party formed by the late uh, Chief Ghani Fawemi. Chief Ghani Fawemi. Chief Ghani Fawemi, right. So that is, this is the gentleman, Chief Martin Onova, we are having as a guest tonight. So if you have any question for him on this issue or on any other issue that is burning your mind, please feel free to indicate by raising your hand through the device and then I will recognize you. My question to you, Chief Onova, at this point will be, do you think that the president of the Federation has handled this SARS protest across the nation right? Clearly not, clearly not. Uh, the president, uh, we have called the president a dictator, a stone age dictator in the past. We are not going to withdraw that. That attitude has been seen with answers. He almost completely ignored them with tokenistic and condescending uh, approvals of the requests of answers. And because the government has lost credibility, not because the NSAS people are unreasonable, it is because the government has lost credibility. The NSAS people did not believe the government and continued the protest, asking for leading actions to convince them. That could have been easily achieved. Second, the government could have engaged with the protesters. The ideas that are, there are no leaders is not correct. There is a shared leadership in NSAS. So any legitimate attempt to negotiate would have been helpful. And the symptomatic, uh, we've done this, we, we've uh, disbanded SAS, and we're going to create a SWAT. And, uh, no member of the previous SAS will be allowed to join SWAT. Now, this would have ordinarily been reasonable. But the situation is complicated. Same government disbanded SAS in 2017, disbanded SAS 2018, disbanded SAS in 2019. And this is 2020, the government is disbanding SAS. Why would you expect reasonable people to believe the government? So the protesters did not believe the government. Now, the story that 35 uh, have been indicted and uh, are going to be prosecuted or disciplined otherwise. Names were not published. Videos were not shown. Follow-ups were not indicated. There was no verification for the stories that government has lost credibility. Why will it now be, uh, blame those who refuse to believe it? So unless you are biased, in every way you look at it, it was the same failure of governance that the protesters were complaining of, that we saw. It was failure of governance when the government hired thugs to attack protesters. And I know you're going to ask me, how do you know the government hired the thugs? There are videos showing security vehicles. The thugs that came to Lagos came in government buses. The ones that uh, went to Abuja were in security vehicles. Secondly, those who were apprehended confessed. So the evidence is clear. The evidence is clear. It is the government that was committed to disperse the protesters. 
it wasn't hoodlums. The hoodlums were operating independently. And the environment for hoodlums to operate was created by the government. Because the protesters did not prohibit security agencies from doing their work. So we need to get the facts there. And if not, then we risk repeats of the same mistakes. So the government mismanaged it by first not admitting before the army attacked the protesters that the vice president gave a, a half-hearted uh, admission claiming that the government responded slowly. And the protesters were not in the mindset to even listen to a vice president who they know has no significant influence in the government. So the facts are very clear. This could have been handled better. Uh, everybody, including uh, the Minister of Information, agreed that the protesters were justified. So if you agree that the protesters are justified, it was your failure. You first have to admit that. Now, the Inspector General of Police, I feel sorry for him because he must take directives from the president. But he is the commander of the police force. That is why he is Inspector General to resign because along the entire line, the reporting line for federal SARS to the DIG uh, investigation or operations, whichever one federal SARS reports to, probably DIG investigation, from DIG investigation to the IG, for the state SARS to the commission of police, so, somebody should take responsibility. And because the matter is national, whoever should take responsibility will be in a national position. The IG is one officer. I feel sorry for him. The police budget is completely inadequate. Police has about 370,000 policemen. And then the Nigerian government budgets 320 billion Naira to cover uniforms, logistics, uh, arms, equipment. That is senseless. The same government budgets 125 billion for the National Assembly of 469 legislators. If you do the arithmetic, you're going to find out that a Nigerian policeman costs Nigeria about 867,000 every year. But a Nigerian legislator costs Nigeria 266 million every year. The arithmetic is simple. 300 divided by 371,000 policemen billion divided by 469 legislators, then you will see the inhumanity of man that it costs us as Nigerian people more than 300 times the cost of one policeman to maintain one legislator. So that's why I feel sorry for the Inspector General. But he must also take responsibility because if he does not, then ultimately, the commander-in-chief must take the responsibility and resign. Commander-in-chief must take the responsibility and resign. And it may have been smart if the commander-in-chief were competent to suggest to the IGP to resign and make that sacrifice. I could be given another appointment. So these things are simple when you have ethical and competent people 
and competent people in leadership positions. Unfortunately, the arrogance of power. And that is what you saw with the military massacre. We will keep praying and uh, hope that uh, things turn out better. Okay, we thank you very much, Chief Onova, at this point. If you have any question, please, now is, is the time to ask them. So now, my next question would be, if you are the president, for instance, um, what exactly will you do now? I think once you do that, it will help to okay. melee the situation. Okay, the first thing is that uh, if you are smart, the English say prevention is better than cure. You don't allow a situation to deteriorate and then you start scampering around for solutions. This was clearly preventable. All you needed was the rule of law. SARS can make arrest. Torture is forbidden in Nigeria. SARS has no right to torture. SARS has no right to kill. And reports were made. And officials have confirmed that reports were made. So we can't say what do we do now without first admitting that we will not be here if we had done things right. So that is the emphasis I want to make. All right, thank you, sir. So, so that um, I'm sorry, I wouldn't want you we to. We cannot. Uh, sorry, Chief Onova, I wouldn't want you to lose sight of your thought. But let's allow. Um, sir Ibodike has indicated earlier that he wanted to ask a question. So maybe his question will align, or his comment will align, with our further thoughts on this matter. So, sir Ibodike, can you please? What do you have to say with what Chief Onova has been telling us for the past? Well, um, you, you, you remember I lost some, I lost that at some point. So um, maybe you may have answered what I wanted to ask. But um, first of all, I want to appreciate his contribution to this matter we're having our hands. Um, that is quite incisive. Then he contested 2015 election with the president president. My question, uh, basically, um, I don't know if you have answered it. What could you have done differently in handling this? If he has, given the scenario we have in our hands, assuming he assumed the president and the scenario have played to this point and he finds himself, this matter handed over to him, what will he do to get Nigeria back to track? Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Okay, uh, su super excellent question. Super excellent question. I'm going to answer in two parts. The first part is that there is no competent president who will allow situations to degenerate this far. There is no country with a competent president where people can be killed extrajudicially and there is no corrective uh, action. This particular General Buhari has been in power since 2015. These reports are countless. If he's unaware, his subordinate should be. Now, if the situation got to this point where we had the NSAS protests, the first government could have done was admit what are clear facts. Because people have been killed, there are records, they should not have been killed. Nobody should be killed extrajudicially. Even an armed robber should not be killed extrajudicially. An armed robber should be arrested, an armed robber should be investigated and properly charged. Now, I'm sure uh, those with a legal background will remember the case of Nasir Ubelu, versus Attorney General of the Federation. Nasir Ubelu was a, a convicted armed robber. But before his appeal was heard, he was executed. So the law is very clear. You don't do that. No president who is responsible 
will have even one citizen killed. And he will not extrajudicially, and he will not try to take corrective action, first for justice. So that is the right thing to do. Let us start from there. And that, if that had been done, and that SARS had not detained people unlawfully, some for two years, some for nine months, unlawfully, the law does not allow you to detain more than 48 hours. You either give administrative bail or you charge the court. And if the police has a need to detain anyone beyond 48 hours, what you need to do is you charge the person to court and ask the magistrate to grant you the authority to detain. So it doesn't mean that if you have an armed robber and you haven't finished the investigation, you can quickly release him. No, what you do, you take him to court. This is the uh, fact we have about this armed robber. We will need to have him in detention till we conclude our investigations. It's very simple. The law provides for all this. What you have seen in Nigeria today with this NSAS is in one word, lawlessness. So the first thing is that you cannot allow lawlessness to prevail. Because once you allow lawlessness, then that's their tendency to anarchy. And leadership is by example. So if, if, if you are president, the first thing is that you must obey all laws. You cannot disregard the constitution. The constitution has a process for removing a chief justice of the federation. If you want him removed, you need to follow that process. The constitution says you cannot spend without appropriation. If you want to spend, you follow the appropriation act. Now, if the expenditure you want to make is not in the budget, you can go to the National Assembly for a supplementary budget. I'm just talking about lawlessness because that is the foundation of all that we have seen. It is only a lawless SAS that will be killing innocent people extrajudicially. It is only a lawless army that will go and shoot innocent people who are protesting. It is only a lawless president that will remove a chief justice through harassment. It is only a lawless president that will spend public uh, resources without appropriation. So we have tolerated a lot of lawlessness. And that is why, because the political leadership itself is lawless. Because it is the political leadership that sets the standard. So the first thing is that there is no way you can have this scenario. Let us go to the second stage. With a responsible government, there is no way you can have this scenario. And Alaji Barabu Musa, has called the government irresponsible, and we agree with him. So that is why you even had this scenario. Professor Oshimbajo is a lawyer. He should know this. He should be able to advise his principal. So, but because of the ambience of lawlessness, he may have also tolerated the situation. Let us move on to the second part of the question. As at the point, if we had made mistakes and answers protest starts, the first thing is to admit the facts. Now, like I said, the government had lost credibility, so the protesters were not willing to believe anything the government said. There are actions you can take immediately to show good faith. And I earlier mentioned that the Inspector General of Police should have resigned. He's one officer. He can be given a political appointment. Somebody will have to take responsibility. Somebody has to be held accountable. And between the commander in chief and the inspector general of police, it would have been better to sacrifice an inspector general of police. And you can give him another appointment. It's no matter. And I'm telling you, if the inspector general had been retired, the protest would have been brought to an end. Because that would have brought back 
some credibility to a government that had lost credibility. All the promises made by the government campaign, it didn't follow up with. In the mindset of the people, the government had no credibility. That is why even when the government disbanded SARS in response to the protest, the protesters did not believe them. They changed it to end SARS, end SWAT, because they know that the government has no credibility. If the government had not wasted its credibility, immediately it disbanded SARS, the protesters would have moved away. So let us be in the mindset of prevention is better than cure. Let us not create crisis and then start asking for solutions. Now that the situation degenerated to this point, it is very simple. A high level government official, minister or secretary to the government could have gone with security to the lucky told the governors that went to meet the protesters, nobody attacked them. The governors went with security, nobody attacked them. Governor Kwayi in Enugu went and met the protesters. Even some Olu in Lagos met the protesters. So, a high-level government person, maybe not uh, General Buhari because of his age and health, a high-level government person, chief of staff to the president or secretary of the government of the federation, could have come with security and sat down with the NSAS protesters at the epicenter of the protest, which is the Lekito Gate. Okay. We are here. This is what we have promised. What else do you want? And if you listen to the protesters, they accepted the government's solution, but they wanted action. And they knew that once they stopped the protest, the same government that made false will also disregard the commitment. So all that was required was at that same toll gate, because that's what they wanted. This we can do within six months. This we can do within three weeks. This we can do, uh, you guys must nominate somebody to sign your part of the agreement. Simple. And the protesters would have gone home with that piece of paper that you signed. But the government has this Stone Age dictatorial disposition, which is not democratic. Because if you claim that you're elected, listen to my choice of words, if you claim that you're elected, according to the constitution, that constitution makes the people the sovereign. You are their servant. So you can't have arrogance in dealing with them. You need to realize that they employed you and that they are paying your salary. And that that same constitution gives them the authority to remove you from office. Yes, because the National Assembly represents the people and the National Assembly to remove a democratically elected person. So it's straightforward. Now that everything had failed, you needed to make that up and have something in paper that they can hold on to. If they had done that, it would have ended. But now they moved in with the army. And like I told you, we are not surprised. The massacre of uh, Shites in Kaduna, the massacre of five uh, protesters in the Southeast. So this is the dictatorial Stone Age dictatorial disposition of the government to use violence against is unfortunate, that is unlawful, that is not democratic. Uh, I, I hope I have tempted the question. Thank you, sir. We thank you very much, Chief Onova, for the insightful discussion. We will be the 
interview will be soon be coming to an end. So if you have a question or comment to make, now please is the time to do it. You can do that by simply using the device to raise up your hand or you can unmute yourself. And once you do that, I will recognize you that you wanted to ask a question or make a comment and I'll, I'll, I will call upon you to do so. Now, while we wait to see whether any question will come out. All right, Jethro, please, what do you have to say? All right, thank you again, Sir Daniel. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Chief Onovo. I, I had asked uh, an earlier presenter the question, but because uh, I need to have, um, let me say, a collection of uh, insights so that we as Nigerian youth should work with. I want to ask you, sir, what do you think the Nigerian youth should do? Because since this uh, uh, protest has now degenerated into a crisis, we have blood spilled and we are, we are actually crying as youths. Now, what do you think we should do from here as Nigerian youths? Thank you. Well, uh, the youth may not uh, like my response because of uh, the generational gap, but I know it's the right response. And when they get to my age, they will also know it's the right response. The first thing is that the youth has to pack. You are, you are backing off because you are making a superior judgment. You need to change. Now, the army is on the street. There has been some overreaction by hoodlums. That has become an excuse for a murderous government to un unleash even further massacre. And violence never, never, as simple, we propose no violence. And that is one of the reasons why we strongly supported it. Now that the government has provoked violence, the response cannot be violence because that will become destructive. The first thing is to back, out, back off from the streets. We have the social media. We have the cops, we have the regular media, we have the International Criminal Court, we have a result. The first thing is that we must stop that will cause violence or that will escalate violence. from the street. We can take this protest or we can continue the protests, become bloody because we are dealing with a bloodthirsty government. Thirsty government. It killed in Kaduna on Armed Shiites, he killed peaceful IPOP protesters, internal displacements in the IDP camp at Ran. So, we are, and many ordinary people protect, uh, uh, predicted that the government will become very going to unleash the military. As so a lot of these things are pretty. So the first thing is that the youth, your demands are right. Even the government has admitted that your demands are right. And when I'm talking about the government, I'm talking about both the executive and the legislature. If you were not right, we will not support you. But that is, is not an option, must be removed completely. 
let's be listening to Saibodike while uh, Chief Onova rejoins us. So, uh, 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 okay, it, it, it just to ask for that question to him. Um, okay. I feel a little different from his position. I feel that the youth have started this uh, protest. It is not an exclusive problem and concern of the youth. It's the general breakdown of the system of governance in Nigeria. And I think that the youth have done well to have started this move. And I feel strongly that beyond they are risking their life further against the brutes uh, and wicked uh, barriers of gun of this government, the, the, the people who have voices in this nation should also sit back to take it off from there until we we'll get the government down to address all the issues that were raised by this uh, use in their demands. That's what I feel. Um, if you feel different, I want to see his reaction on this. Clearly, I agree with you, but they, they cannot back down. It, it, it's their struggle. We have supported the beginning. We will continue to support them. The key thing is to prevent escalation of violence because violence does not provide remedy. To stop the escalation of violence is to withdraw from the streets, not from the struggle is to withdraw from the streets. That is where the army is. That is where they're shooting the young people dead. So that's our position. We're not saying withdraw from the struggle. We're saying withdraw from the streets now, immediately. Because we must put the lives of these young people. And that is the right thing to do. The Nigerian army will be shooting at innocent young people who are kneeling with the Nigerian flag, singing the national anthem, you, can't, you cannot confront them with this. We will confront them, and we will confront them otherwise. We will confront them intellectually, we will confront them morally, we will confront them legally, we will confront them uh, internationally and politically. So the key thing is, let us make sure we don't give the military opportunity for more violence. We draw from the streets. That is the position now. All right. Let, be, Thank before you. Before we go back to uh, Chief Ibodika, let's listen uh, from Hope, please, with regards to the, to the issue uh, now raised. Hope, what do you, can you unmute yourself and, and tell us what you think? Either a question or a comment. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. All right, my question is this. Um, the youths who um, the president said they were lazy and they weren't doing anything. We know that China has um, a large number of youths and they made provision of the amenities. These politicians get into office, they are paid millions of naira and you see the youths roaming around the streets with no jobs. They are collecting the, the, the salaries. Why are you saying that the youths, enough of them on the streets, without them laying out this, um, without them laying their lives for this, nothing will be done. We're talking about the police brutality. How do we get there? The police brutality, how do you recruit the police officers? How much are they paid at the end of the month? Is it enough for them to take care for their families? without them asking for anything on the road. The, 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 the money that we get from the oil is being distributed within the, uh, uh, the political elites. We know that, that they go overseas, they buy houses, they move their families there, they come here and get, they come back home and get the talks. They pay these youths peanuts to protect them, to fight for them during the polit uh, political uh, rallies and so on. So. If you're saying um, now that the youths are out on the street, try to make sure that the world hears their voice because one, there's no roads, no social amenities, no electricity. So I think what the youths are doing should be a continuous thing for them to hear their voice, either for Buharia to step down and reverse the money, the large sum amount of money that the, um, the House of Senate, House of Assembly are collecting on monthly basis. 
and be useful for nothing. All right. Th thank you very much. Uh, Chief Donovan, how do you respond to, to this point? That why should the youth withdraw from the street when basically they are basically well, withdrawing well, to nothing? Well, uh, the, 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 the youth should must win the streets. See the direction today after the shooting yesterday. It's been basically violence for violence. And like I said, feel no to violence because violence only destroys. If you burn down the Nigerian Ports Authority, you are increasing the poverty of the Nigerian people because the Nigerian Ports Authority needs to be fixed. And it will be fixed with funds that you could have used for education or for health. So let's get this very clear. We're not saying we draw from the struggle. We're saying change strategy. This one has become too bloody. The strategy of protesting on the streets has led to loss of lives. And the first thing is to protect life. The youth that you're complaining have nothing. Today, have their lives, have time because they are young to remedy all the dysfunctional situations in the country. So don't misunderstand withdraw from the streets as withdraw from the struggle. I was a youth, I was a student union leader. The key thing is, instead of the same youth who wants the good future for, to die in the streets, when they die in the streets, how do they achieve the good future? What we're saying, the strategy of the street has led to bloodshed. We must first stop the bloodshed. And because the government is irresponsible, we cannot trust the government to stop the bloodshed. So the youth should stop the bloodshed. How? We draw from the streets. And I have given many other fronts on which the war can be carried out. I have said we can continue the war politically, the struggle. We can continue it legally. We have the social media. We have the, the courts. So for now, street protests should be discontinued immediately. Immediately. In any decision you make in life as a young person, you must do a comprehensive cost-benefit analysis. It does not our, allow our youth to lose their right to life to an irresponsible goal. Again, I repeat, withdraw from the streets. That does not mean withdraw from the struggle. Withdraw from the streets. Thank you. We thank you very much, Chief Onova, for being with us tonight. And the last question we'll take, if, if you don't mind, before you finally leave is, Jethro have been raising up his hand. Maybe, uh, does he disagree with you that the, the youth should withdraw or not? Jethro, what do you think? All right. Thank you so much, sir, again, for the privilege to speak. Uh, actually, you know, uh, I my, my heart and my um, my eyes actually flowed with tears when he, he, he actually made the point that, and then strongly that we should withdraw. So you, you remember that it is this continuous stay on the streets that at least the international um, um, uh, community are also voicing to support us. I saw some videos of um, the former Lagos State Governor uh, in France, where um, some protesters were, were, were seen around the hotel that he lodged, and then another video uh, from, from US, and, and as such. So, so if you said we should withdraw from the streets and then we should use some of these social media handles that we're familiar with, I wanted to also remind you that uh, we were expecting a guest that is already um, petitioned, is it petitioning or suing um, 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 Twitter for allowing the protests to actually be um, uh, uh, 
uh, is it displayed or, 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 or I mean play, presented on Twitter. So if Facebook is also um, I'm, I mean uh, is this sanctioned or sued, how or where else do we do we showcase our grievances? And then uh, I think what you are saying that uh, uh, we don't need to, to, to keep this, I mean, uh, our lives. What is the life, sir, if we cannot actually have a government that speaks for us? I fully know that a US citizen anywhere in this world, one single US citizen has value that hundred soldiers can be deployed anytime to protect. We are in Nigeria and we are being treated as though we are immigrants. So it's a pain to hear that we should withdraw us from the street. I understand that you, 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 you love us, you like that we should stay alive. But I also remember that no, 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 no revolution is, is, is easy. We appreciate uh, the blood of our brothers and sisters that have, has been shed already. And we hope that it will not continue. I'm not backing those who have uh, destroyed or looted some properties. It's not right. But the, the excuses, the anger that they saw when they were being shot. But to say we should withdraw, I feel that uh, that's, that's rather a discouragement. You should have given one of the suggestions that some of you that are aged would now uh, start up. Maybe you can you can you can you can start yours and say um, stop killings of the end pro uh, end SARS protesters, so that we would say that yes, you at your own age are trying to protect our 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 uh, our interest by keeping us alive and stepping in to start your own protest for our sake. That we, you know, that should have been the backing, but I, I, I did not actually dispute because for me, you, what you said is, is an advice and that's your own view. And I really appreciate that. But then oh, I will now be able to now weigh that and see how we can now use a collection of uh, your suggestions so that we'll now be able to take the right decisions. But what we want is that this fight has to yield good results for us and our elderly so that we have a good uh, Nigeria to turn over to the com incoming generation because this is our own generation. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, thank you, Jethro. Uh, I will advise you as a young man you, you must know the difference between the younger and the older. The difference is that the younger have more energy. The older have more experience. Now, That's true, you, sir. You cannot confront the federal government of Nigeria in violence. The Nigerian government has about a million armed people if you count all the armed forces and all the paramilitary agencies. You saw what happened at the toll gate. You have no chance in a violent country. But you have a chance in a moral, intellectual, social, or international confrontation. Even spirit That's true. confrontation. So what we are saying is, we have supported answers publicly because we agree. And even the government minister for information implied that the demands are right. So even though you don't believe him, I don't believe that. But the fact is that that gives you moral victory. Second is that you are not supposed to stop your struggle. Don't misunderstand me. I was vice president of the Badal Student Union when we did the sub protest in 1989. Universities were shut down in the whole country because it was national for five months. We were at home for five months. So we were youth like you, don't make that misconduct. Non-violent struggles have yielded results, but because you're young and strong, you think that energy will do everything. No, 
strategy to do it. And I will give you examples. Gandhi, Mahatma Gandhi, he believed in nonviolence. He suffered, him and his supporters suffered a lot of violence, a lot of deaths, but they triumphed. The U.S. civil struggle, they insisted on no violence. They survived. So the idea that for a struggle to be effective, it must be violent, you need to banish that from your mind. It is not true. Many nonviolent struggles have succeeded. When uh, the struggle in South Africa got violent, the apartheid regime locked up Mandela for 26 years or 27. He was in prison as the leader. And in all those periods, apartheid was using violence oppression. But today, what has happened? So I will not blame you because when I was young like you, I also wanted action now, results now. And I have told you that we, what you are doing, we have done. Because you guys keep thinking that we did nothing. What you have do, what you're doing, we have done. And experience. We didn't say come out from the street on the first day. Now that you have turned violent, you need to leave the streets immediately. We don't want you dead. We want you alive. That is most important. Please yeah. convince your comrades to leave the streets. Use my name, say that I said so. Leave the streets now. Don't leave the struggle, but leave the streets because we want you alive. Thank you. All right. Thank you, sir. We thank you very much, Chief Onovo and uh, Jethro, for seeing this <laughs> that very, very interesting exchange. We also thank you very much, Sir Ikem Ibodike, for, contribute, for your contributions tonight and all our viewers and listeners. Now we will take the final word from Chief Onovo before we call it today. Even hope you are still raising up your hand. Please make it very brief for us to allow Chief Onovo to give us his final thoughts and then merge it with whatever you have to say. Very briefly, please, quickly. Thank you. Um, are you hearing me? Yes, quickly. Clearly. Um, he talked, yeah, he talked about the struggle in South Africa. Mandela paid a price for that. He was jailed for a number of years. Our leaders don't listen. The, the, the president has had a fallen, a, a de definite uh, ears. Without this struggle, drawing attention of the international media, international um, uh, uh, people to, to Nigeria to know that this is what is happening. Elected leaders, they pay them huge amounts of money while the number of Nigerian youth are lavishing in poverty, who have struggled so hard to graduate from university without a job. And, 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 and at that, I'm not saying that the violence, the thing is that who started the violence? It was the army who shot at the peaceful protest because we know that we don't have faith in Nigerian government. You disband that, the next minute you start a SWAT team. That shows how, it, 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 how corrupt, how untrustworthy the government is. That's all I could say. I've heard all you said that the struggle continues. Mandela paid the price. We want to show the Nigerian government that enough is enough. Enough is enough. The youth languishing in prison. The ones that come out in, 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 from the university haven't got a job. And the, 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 the House of Assembly, the legislators, they are all there. They have protection. I know someone who was elected as a minister in 1983. He served under um, Shagari. Up till now, he still gets pension. His wife travels abroad. He has four houses in London. He was just a minister, a minister at that republic. And he he has total package. Now that he's dead, he's not alive anymore. But his wife still benefits from federal government. So why should the youth be suffering? For All how right. long? Okay, thank you very much. Um, thank you. Yeah, we'll, we'll allow you yeah. over to uh, uh, very uh, respond to you and then to what you have just said and, and give us his final thoughts before we call it a day. Thank you very much for your contribution. So Chief Onova, please, your final thoughts tonight. Well, 
Hope, hope. Uh, I agree with all your uh, highlights about uh, injustice in Nigeria. And that is why end SARS and end bad governance is justified. And that is why we support it. We have been in the struggle earlier than now. The only difference between your position and my position is that I'm saying change the street strategy and keep the youth alive. Now, you're saying that we have got international attention to street strategy. Excellent. Now we have the videos. There's an international criminal. There are Nigerian courts. We have the social, we have the political space. We have the social space. This is not, there is not one way to do a struggle. And I've given you other instances. So what we are proposing to you is all the injustice you complained about, I've lived with it here. I've struggled as a youth. I've struggled as an adult. So you are very right about that. But what we're saying, let us not even complicate it further. Let's fix it instead of complicating it further. And we're not going to fix it by allowing a murderous Nigerian army to continue killing our youth. No, that will not be how to fix it. That's the only uh, perspective that, to me, uh, seems not to be sinking down well with the youth. You have been provoked. You have been offended. It is clear you have been offended, but stay alive. It is very important. Please stay alive. Let us withdraw from the streets and continue the struggle otherwise. Justice will come if we work hard enough. It will come. I can tell you based on experience and age, justice will come. Thank you. We thank you very much once again, Chief Martin Onovo, for being with us tonight. It's been a very, very wonderful experience. So thank you very much once again for being with us tonight. It's been a pleasure listening to you. Thank you so much. Stay safe, everyone. Thank you very much.